Hey everyone, so we're going to be exploring the coronavirus structure again. Uh, this is the spike protein and we can see the interface right here where it interacts with the ACE2. And we're going to be exploring the mutations that are actually occurring on the receptor binding domain of the spike. Uh, this is sort of a, a going to be a super mutant. Uh, so we're going to be exploring mutant strains that are around the world. So South African, California, right in our backyard. Um, and, and although these strains haven't really combined and that's not really going to happen, we're going to use this model uh, to mutate uh, as if all of those happen to explore how they actually interact with the ACE2 protein. Uh, does it lead to you know, more infection, more severity of the disease? Uh, I think there's still a lot of questions out there in the scientific community. Uh, but getting down into the nuts and bolts and really seeing what's going on with atoms uh, is going to be really important. So, yeah, you know, thanks, Daniel, and thanks, Scotty, our, our two scientists, for joining us today. Uh, let's go ahead and get started and explore the mutations. Hey, Steve. Yeah, so um, a variant discovered in California, uh, which surged in late 2020, it carries this mutation. It's a leucine to arginine mutation in the 452. And so uh, the good news is that it's not predicted to be, uh, you know, to make the virus more infectious. So um, uh, for some reason in the Los Angeles area has been spreading very fast these days. And it's one of the predominant uh, variants there. But again, it sounds like it, it, we shouldn't be very worried about it as far as we know. Yeah, so let's go ahead and mutate it using the mutation menu right here. Uh, so we'll go ahead and click on arginine. All right, and we could see uh, if we color it in the carbonite coloring as well, right. that it actually has uh, all these nitrogens, right? And it's a polar residue. Yeah, it's a positively charged residue and definitely polar as well. And uh, um, even though there are a few different conformers here, rotamers, uh, we, we can tell that it's not really uh, reaching to the ACE2 surface that much, uh, which is probably why it's not making the virus more infectious. <clears throat> as opposed to, as we've discussed previously, you know, other mutations which, which make it really easier for the, the virus to attach. Like, the one we discussed with Dr. Kuiper recently, this the South African variant, right? Uh, this one's a completely different story. And also the, the 501 that we have down here with the tyrosine, th those mutations uh, make the virus uh, more infectious because it, it increases the affinity to the human receptor, which uh, gladly, again, doesn't look to be the case for this California new variant. So that's good news. So, I mean, is it possible though that, um, you know, it's sort of interacting with the surrounding residues like this serine 494 and, you know, might be um, on a di displacing more things in the receptor binding domain to make it potentially bind? Like, uh, be curious to, to run an MD simulation and, and sort of see how right. this would you know, move over time. Yeah. Um, uh, Gadi, like, have you also been, you know, following and, and keeping in tune with all the, uh, the mutational changes? I, I guess you have any input, like, so this one with the South African, right? Um, mm -hmm. they could, you know, bind, uh, potentially over here because it's a, mm -hmm. you know, more of a flexible loop. Um, you know, this yes. one being on, you know, part of a beta sheet, um, I don't know. What, what, what's your opinion? This, uh, what we can see right here is that it suggests that a polarity change can cause uh, a change in the whole uh, structure of the protein to uh, to make small movements in the uh, in the whole structure, thus liberating some of the hydrophobic and hydrophilic and or hydrophilic uh, regions. And those, when it's uh, when a protein is close to or attached to a membrane, it changes the mechanical properties of that membrane. And by changing the mechanical properties of the membrane, we can see faster fusion or better fusion. So, uh, to study to study how one residue or two residues can change those mechanical properties is also important. And the way we see how the structure changes from one configuration to another, which can be very easily seen right here, it's super important. And something that biophysicists would be very interested to to account for and get good quantitative data. 
And are you saying uh, in, in regards to like the up position of the uh, receptor binding domain, sort of, sort of when it's like locked and loaded and, and ready to bind, or are you just uh, it, you know? yes? Uh, uh, if if the both molecules are polar, they are going to like get a better attraction. The what I would be interested on it's to like see how uh, the protein changes and uh, it liberates those uh, or exposes more hydrophobic or hydrophilic uh, residues but just one uh, just one one of these uh, residues could cause that at uh, this point in time i don't i don't think it does too much of that if it's not affecting it that could be one of the uh, that could be one of the factors that uh, that uh, that influences the infectivity. Yeah, let's go ahead and uh, maybe look at some of the other ones. So, Dan, you, you had mentioned the uh, South African variant over here, um, tyrosine five hundred one. You said that was part of which mutation? Yeah, that's the lineage from the UK variant, but it, it's also showing in in many other uh, lineages. And by the way, talking about lineages, I wanted to make the point that even though perhaps this mutation, perhaps we just don't know yet, but perhaps it doesn't increase the affinity, but this lineage might contain other mutations in some other epitopes, not necessarily in this surface here, but in some other areas of the spike. And those mutations um, might decrease you know, the affinity of our antibodies to neutralize the virus. So... You know, there's there's another possibility that this California variant would be not so great for us, you know, in, in that regard. But yeah, and then the one you mentioned, Steve, yeah, this 501 is this very popular, very common and spread, widespread uh, mutation. It's also uh, predicted to make some stack interactions over here with the ACE2 protein. And um, yeah, it, I believe it makes part of most of the lineages, if I'm not wrong. And But then there are so many different um, variations, you know, variants. And then what's funny also is that they have emerged, most of them independently in different geographic locations. You know, I guess the selective pressure that the virus is uh, undergoing um, in the end, it, it, you know, nature finds the same solution multiple times in different places, right? I mean... It's, uh, it's interesting, yeah. So it's a bit, bit of a convergent evolution uh, just because, you know, tyrosine here, right. there's a tyrosine there. Like this tyrosine part of the ACE2 is going to stay there. It makes a lot of sense to have a tyrosine here if you're a, a protein designer. And, and nature is the best protein designer out there. And it's, you know, designed this, uh, you know, mutated in that way multiple times. It's interesting. Others, like the deletions, uh, well, and this one also, the uh, asparagine, 439 it's also been has also been reported very recently i believe uh, just last week there's a recent manuscript discussing um, this mutation i'm not very well aware of what's going on with this mutation but i know it's been reported and then we have the deletions that we haven't really covered today but we have the that 6970 deletion and 144 145 and there's actually a few new variants that just popped up around the United States. Like in this fear and cleavage site, what we're saying is this, you know, if it mutates into a proline here, uh, it might sort of be more kinked up. Um, and that might actually affect the way that the spike protein is working for, for this particular blue loop that's just right on the side there. Uh, in the red, that's just like a, a protein that might bind to the, the side. Um, but really, you know, we're looking at this whole fear and cleavage site uh, being affected by that one mutation. Yeah, it's speculated that the presence of uh, proline at this site may introduce a favorable kink that just promotes the dynamic conformational change necessary for cleavage at the S1, S2 site. And um, yeah, that is governed by furin-like activities, but also by trypsin-like proteases and some cathepsins. And so, yeah, that's about the proline, but then there's all the other isolates um, that have found uh, histidine instead in that position. Mm -hmm. And um, in that case, uh, the proto it's speculated that the protonation of histidine could also act as a conformational switch uh, affecting the accessibility of the proteases. You know, it's uh, been happening in many places, actually, so that... Uh, that points to a fitness advantage of the new virus, 
but it's not necessarily meaning that it will be worse or more deadly or anything like that. Yeah, and, and this is very far from the receptor binding domain uh, where we would typically be looking at mutations, uh, sort of along this region where it binds with ACE2. Uh, but for this case, it's actually on sort of the bottom and the side of the spike protein. Um, and we can see that the 677 residue of interest uh, mutating around the United States as well as other places around the world is located right here where we have this histidine residue. Right, it's not in the spike, uh, in, in the receptor binding domain. However, it's still very relevant because here's where the furin uh, may cleave and, you know, and separate this S1 and S2 subunits and therefore has uh, implications. Is, is that what we it's have kind here of, in the red? Is, is that the furin? Yeah, that's right. That's the furin. Yeah, that would bind in there. Yeah. We see some hydrogen bonding in there interacting with the spike. And uh, yeah, so this just mutation may affect the the interaction there, yeah. So I'm talking about the N501Y right now. Yeah, that's that's the important mutation that's present in in most of the new uh, variants. Yeah, yeah that's, that's um, in, uh, 41. Right yeah, the 501. Yeah, this this is a critical one, asparagine to tyrosine. So there's a few. Um, yeah, we can see. It so you're talking about this over... like tyrosine to tyrosine type of uh, right, Daniel and Gotti. Uh, it's always interesting to explore the spike. Um, yeah, unfortunately, this virus is you know still spreading, still mutating. So uh, stay tuned, and we'll be you know keeping on top of the latest mutations and letting you know what's really going on at the molecular level.